As a store owner, I just can't imagine anyone carrying magic product anymore because it really is, you know, unless like you guys are getting magic product at like $60 a box, everybody who's a magic player and magic players, they love to be frugal, they love to save money and that's great if you're a customer, not so great if you are the store owner, right? Uh, they know right now this time new Campana has been on sale for the last uh, two days or two weeks, two weeks for $72 a box. David Adams has the battle bond, not battle bond, the, um, the set that no one likes. Jumpstart. Yes, it has Jumpstart on sale for $50 a box and then for a case it's like $48. And a lot of stores are dumping inventory of Magic the Gathering and no stores can get Pokemon. So th there's a dichotomy here. Uh, we started carrying Japanese Pokemon cards and it's been, you know, a lot of fun. I've been more accepting that I cannot read the cards after Fire Emblem Cypher. I believe if I did not start collecting Fire Emblem Cypher, I wouldn't have jumped onto Japanese cards at all for Pokemon. But, you know, obviously, you know, Fire Emblem Cypher has beautiful cards. They're all in Japanese. The game never came to America. It never became English. Otherwise, I would just be collecting English cards. That is the same way I feel about White Schwartz. I only collect English cards because I want to read the damn card. So Pokemon in Japanese has been a huge revelation and all my friends uh, are just very excited you know, and again, it's something new, something exciting. We're getting a great introduction price, which has ended. Uh, so we'll see what, where the new price point is. We've been already told, but it'll feel different when it gets here. Magic stores suck, man. I mean, I cannot say this enough. Uh, there's no way in hell because at some point in time, so if you are a Magic player, let me, let me just say this. You know that set, Neon Death Dynasty has been at 70. Black Friday, I saw it for 70. Um, I didn't order it, but I should have. New Campana, Crimson Vow, Midnight Hunt, all these sets have been at 70 at one point in time. And they rotate, they rotate. The uh, Jumpstart set is heavily discounted on other websites. Uh, but even, um, what, what was it? Um, Dominaria, yeah, Dominaria United, that was at 80, 82 on Amazon. Uh, I've seen on some websites for 75 because they got to compete with Amazon. So they're theoretically dumping it at a massive discount. Like you cannot do this. I've talked about this in MetaZoo and Flesh and Blood. You cannot carry a game which you have to do gameplay first. So gameplay, you're gonna lose money. I've already gone over the $5 and how it's a big deal for many Magic players. Even supposedly very wealthy Magic players, they, they don't wanna contribute $5 to the community pool so they can play. Five dollars don't even pay for a minty for my dogs, my dudes. A minty, like, you know, the, the little green minty. So like to complain about five dollars is really something only a Magic the Gathering player would complain about uh, in terms of, and they're getting a promo and a place to sit, a play and a safe. I mean, five dollars are parking in downtown Houston. I mean, $25, you'd be lucky to get all day parking. So back to my magic assessment, and I really just kind of want to make this super clear as to why you cannot make money from this game. Um, the smartest customers you have, they're going to either buy from Rudy Chan's or going to buy online. Okay. You cannot be competitive at $72 a box when you're paying 86 a box, 86, 90. I pay $90 a box for draft. I see it on Amazon all the time. The same boxes I paid 90 for, I see on Amazon all the time for 72. That seems to be their draft box price for boxes they want to, you know, um, sell cheaply. On the other hand, uh, for something like MetaZoo, where it's the MSRP, I believe is uh, 100 or 90. What is it? Um, you buy for 76, I'm being told, and it drops to 50, it's the same thing. Same with Flesh and Blood, right? Terror to Aria, I believe, uh, Monarch, you know, Monarch First Edition. You're, you're buying these boxes at such a high price and they instantly, instantly tank in price. And you cannot sell it for anything close because everybody in the community, so if you are somebody who is going to be high value, 
if you're somebody who buys a car a pack from Walmart, you're a very different demographic than somebody who knows that there's a local game store to buy packs slightly discounted. That demographic who goes to the local game store also price competes with you price compete with Amazon all the time. They are very well aware that it's Amazon. Um, if a mom or dad or grandmother is looking for a gift and you go to Walmart, they see a pack of magic, they buy it, they're not looking at Amazon. Okay? They're looking at, okay, this pack is very convenient. I was going to do my grocery shopping anyway. I'm actually on the checkout aisle and oh, by the way, you know, hair, here's something that my son likes. They're not price conscious at that point. But a magic player who goes to the local game store, they are extremely price conscious. And if you can't offer them something close and you cannot to Amazon or Rudy Chan or something like that, you're going to get slaughtered. Um, and in addition to the, right now, as somebody who has a distributor, there's no way to make money from Magic. There is no way to compete with Amazon. There is none. There is none. Um, and, you know, the, the idea that you could, I think it was feasible maybe a few years ago, but the price, $72, guys, that's like, that's on, and you might be like, oh, well, they don't have the, the set I want, but at the same time, you know that at some point, every single one of these sets will be at 72. Because they have always been Crimson, Midnight. Uh, I mean, some of them were lower than 72 for a draft. And even as a Magic player, I can't in good conscience tell you to buy from my store at 100, which gives me a, a $10 profit. After tax overhead, maybe I'm making a dollar or two when there's a box for new Compena at 72, right? I have boxes of new Compena. I have blisters of new Compena. I have um, these uh, fat packs of new Compena. The price that they're dumping new Compena at, as of this moment in time is not, uh, the price never got that low. Um, and Dominaria United and Brothers War will drop soon too. I'm, not, I'm positive. For the next holiday, Brothers War will be at 82, if not 72, for a drop box um, on Infinity. And, and they're not the only one, Dave and Adam. People have to understand that if we are in, if you own a Magic Store, you're in the game of margins. You're not in the game of buying a box, keeping it wrapped for 10 years, and hoping it goes up in price. That you cannot afford that because you need cash flow to buy the next set and the next set and the next set. And what you're really building is not, you're not building more cash, you're building more inventory. So every game store owner will tell you this, and I can tell you this from experience. What where the money, you know, where the money is going is going towards more inventory. The more inventory you have, the more customers you can have, and you repeat and rinse and repeat. But your cash flow is always going to be in a crunch because of this idea that you're always gonna reinvest in the company, reinvest in the inventory, reinvest in more inventory. You cannot hold the inventory. If the inventory does not sell, if it, the new Compena, the Neon Dynasty, if the Dominator United, the British War, they do not sell, you're aft. Because then you have to take a loan, which is very high interest rate at this moment in time. You have to discount your old inventory and maybe take a loss on it just to free up capital. Uh, magic stores, I, I don't I don't see anyone talking about this. They're incredibly intensive capital. Um, people say you can start a magic car at 50,000 or 100,000. That money will run out real fast because it all goes to inventory. So when you're a magic store, you're not actually making any money. Nobody make no money. If you're a successful magic store, what you're actually doing is you're just building up your inventory, kind of like Rudy Chan does. You just continue to get more heavy bags and more heavy bags and okay, we made it. And it's like, okay, cool, where's the money? Uh, the money's in these things, this wall boxes. You see, that's where the money is. And like, okay, where, where's the cash? Oh, no, 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 there's no cash. Uh, and I, I don't know, that's been my experience yet. And I watched another YouTuber and he had the same experience. I was like, wait a second, you know, I, I think he summarized it in some slightly different way than I did now, and it, it made a lot of sense to me. Uh, for the first few years of opening a card shop, you are not super worried. I mean, you can't even be super worried about cash flow. Um, you're just trying to make it. Um, you're not going to have a lot of money. I, let me just tell you this. 
No one is opening a magic store because they want to make a lot of money. They're opening it because they love the pain. Hey, some people like it. Hi guys, financial pain.